Hello YouTube and Mr. Forks, welcome to another visual effects breakdown from my short film Friend and the Devil. Today we're going to be taking a look at this cool evaporation um, in which the leprechaun disappears into thin air to the um, shock of our two actors. And I'm just going to be taking a look at how I created this effect, how you can recreate this effect and some of the challenges, problems that may occur. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by taking a look at some of the footage we had to create this effect. If I just solo this bottom layer, this is our starting clip. You can see that we had Josh Burgess, the leprechaun, lifting his hand up and clicking. And Josh Falks um, just wants to copy him. He's, he's not sure what's going on, though. He, he, he doesn't know, though. He's, he's, even, he's turned to uh, camera. He's just like, what's going on? What's going on? Um, he he literally just needed to stand there, um, but that's cool. Um, this is um, the clip goes on for a bit longer, um, but basically, there's a few different takes. Um, all just I just kept the camera rolling um, of this kind of thing happening, and in a couple of the takes, my dad, um, Mike Allen, and Josh Forks had to jump back as he clicks. But obviously, this didn't happen in this portion of the clip. So, what we had was, we started off with an initial base plate, and basically for the first half of the clip, we have got Josh Burr just clicking his fingers, and that's it. So, the clip you just saw, that is the first half of the clip. But what we obviously had to do was we had to put Josh over the top, but we used Josh from a different time zone. If we just have a look at Josh offset, you can see that um, he's got a nice pen tool around him, we've just sectioned him off, and in this... Um, take, he just stands there, that's all he does. And then we line up the clip time wise, we move this clip around so that as Josh Burgess clicks his fingers, Josh Forks jumps back. You know what, I'm going to call them by their names because there's two Joshes, it's getting a bit confusing. The de um, Jack jumps back as the leprechaun clicks his fingers. We just had to match the time up with that. It's good that they were actually, it was a tripod shot. Obviously, if you're using shaky handheld shot, it's going to be a lot harder. What you want to do is stabilize the shots using After Effects stabilization tools, using the motion tracker. Then, once we had Josh over the top, uh, sorry, Jack over the top, uh, it was then a matter of using the clip where Mike Allen, my, um, the devil, jumps back at the same time. So what we then had, we had a second base plate, and you can see as this base plate fades away, base plate two comes in, and base plate two is basically uh, the devil jumping back without anyone there. So you can see what we've got at the moment very quickly by creating a layer for Josh, an initial clip of the leprechaun clicking. And then a second clip in which Mike Allen jumps back. What we had to do was make sure that he was standing in the same position. You can see that actually as he clicks his fingers, there's a bit of a blurring because it's, it's a fade through. Um, the initial base plate fades through to the second one and he jumps back. Um, but obviously it's, it works quite well because then it adds to this kind of like whew, the whooshing effect. Um, but yeah, make sure that your actors are standing in the same places. Obviously we could have done all three separately, but the reason we did initially have him in was because the gun needed to be lined up and we didn't have any form of marker on set. Then, obviously, the main effect is the leprechaun evaporating. Um, you can see that as he fades away, we then have this new layer over the top, you can see. And that basically is the same clip, but it's been isolated. As you can see, he's been pen tooled around, he's been isolated as an element, and that is actually now a freeze frame. Um, you can see if we turn off the effects, it's just a freeze frame that fades out. And then we add this paint layer, which basically the idea was to paint out the gun. You can see if we zoom in, that obviously by isolating, and we needed a bit of feathering, but the gun's still there. Um, so we just painted out the gun. Obviously, the initial aim was to paint out the gun frame by frame, but this would not have worked, as um, it's too tedious and unnecessary when he's going to be 
um, displaced using turbulent displace which is um, there's just a quick time code on the evolution it's set to multiply by time about about 30 or 40 so for every second that goes by the number changes um, the evolution changes and the size is set to about 8.3 but what we did was that we started off the ti the size small so as you can see it starts off with small ripples and then the ripples get bigger and crazier which adds to the like disappearing into the distance kind of effect and then obviously his um you can see that the opacity is keyframe to disappear over time so kind of like smoke disappearing into the distance and that's the kind of effect we we're going for the next phase was to add in this hand spark you can see as he clicks it's much nicer when we have a realistic looking um, composited element over the top that kind of like adds to the mythicalness. We, initially it wasn't necessary but um, if you look at films like um, The Deathly Hallows you can see that the spark when Dobby clicks just adds the magic otherwise it's just a click and a reaction whereas uh, the click is part of the magic. And then um, we added some ground sparks you can see Obviously, that they're not lined up with his feet. That is an issue, but um, we fixed that up in a sec. And the idea with the ground sparks, you can see they've um, got a pen tool, like some kind of feathering, um, just so that we didn't have harsh edges. Because with the stock elements, which are from Video Copilot, um, they the sparks fade off and hit harsh edges. So we just made sure that there was some feathering going on around these edges. Um, and the reason that this is higher than the feet level is because we wanted the sparks getting up as high and higher than the actual um, disappearing smoke-like element of the leprechaun. Then we added in the ground dirt. You can see that there is some dirt by his feet. Um, it was colour corrected to try and match the um, match this um, floor. It may need a bit more saturation, I don't know. Obviously you can see the foot spasms and goes below there. That is not an issue because um, that's kind of like the smoke. You may have wanted to paint it out but I don't see that as an issue. You'd paint that out by pre-composing the disappearing layer and um, then masking around it so you can control where he um, smokes off to. Then it was a matter of adding some elements to the entire shot itself. You've got the um, plate displaced and basically you can see as he um, clicks his fingers there's like um, a tiny amount of displacement going on to the whole place. You can't really notice it too much. but there's the tiniest amount of displacement it falls off really quickly um, but that just means that like it's mainly around him we can see that there's some extra displacement going on that just it's all about adding these tiny little things that sell it so it doesn't just look like you've slabbed on a uh, leprechaun disappearing over the top so adding a bit of displacement to affect the background so that you can see that we've got some um, practical effects. Obviously we didn't have any practical effects, this was all digital, um, but stuff like smoke which we can try and make look practical and displacement of the original base plate so that it looks like it's being affected by his effect as well. And then there's the shock blur and that just comes in as he clicks, you can see BAM it blurs. That helps hide um, the transition as the devil Fades to the initial, uh, fades to the new base plate. Also, if you look at the, um, if you look as um, the initial base plate fades into base plate two to um, disappear off the original leprechaun, you can see that these trees up over here, um, they completely move. Look, you can see due to the wind, they just. It just looks awkward. So adding something like this shock blur. So as he clicks, bam. Um, oh, sorry. As he clicks, bam. And then you can see it really hides this like blurring. It actually looks like the trees are potentially moving because of his um, effect, which is more what we want. <coughs> 
So you can see that it's actually quite simple. Um, you just the the hardest thing is getting the layering right of making sure that the reactions are in time. You can see that as he clicks, bam, Josh takes a step back, um, Jack takes a step back, sorry, and the devil takes a step back. And then making him displace was quite simple. This was a matter of isolating the separate characters so that we could line up their performances for the um, best effect. Obviously, if um, we hadn't have changed um, Josh's performance, Jack's performance, this guy for a, a later date, if we hadn't have swapped his initial performance out for a, t a later take, sorry, then it would not have been the same effect. If we turn off that, you can see that as he disappears, that's almost in time, but you can see that he'd moved far too early and it just wasn't working. So we took the performance from a different take and just put it over the top really easily. Um, but it's little stuff like that. In fact, in the social network, they did lots of stuff like that. They conformed in After Effects um, by offsetting performance for the best reaction. And it wasn't even effect stuff, it was just ensuring that the performances are in tune. For instance, if someone starts talking too close to the other one, you just isolate them and offset them and just try and fill it in with some paint and stuff like that. So I hope this was slightly helpful. Now you can kind of uh, see what was going on to create this effect. Um, like I said, isolating the different elements and ensuring that there's no harsh edges with the... Um, composited effects like the dirt spraying up. You could have done it without the dirt, but I just wanted to see some kind of like reaction, otherwise it will just... You see, without the dirt, um, it just looks like someone disappearing slabbed over the top of some initial footage. Whereas with the dirt, it looks like he's disappearing and it's actually having an effect on the environment around him, making it feel much more real when you watch it. Subtly. So I hope this was helpful, um, I'll be back soon with some more visual effects breakdowns and also some new original tutorials um, you can expect in the next week or two. Um, the Encore Training Series is pending on when I release a new DVD of one of my films, and as soon as that's done then I will be using that project as my project for the Encore Training Series. So I hope this was helpful and I'll speak to you guys soon.